we're back. It's another Whiskey Quickie. And today we're taking a look at, well, I don't know, Ryan, you ever made a, when you were young, you ever make a, a blood oath pact with somebody? You like cut your hand or cut your finger and shake on it. Only pinky promises. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not bold enough to do a blood oath. Nah, me neither. But today we're looking at Blood Oath Pact 8. And so this one will give you a little bit of the background information on it as well. It's a combination of the finest bourbons that John Rempe, he's the master distiller, the blender, and everything over there at Lux Row, he could find, including a 14-year rye bourbon, an 11-year rye bourbon, as well as an 8-year-old rye bourbon finished in Calvados casks. So if you're wondering what Calvados is, it's actually an apple or brer brandy, sorry, brer, pear brandy uh, from the Normandy region in the northwestern France that is distilled from cider and aged for a minimum of two years in oak casks. So like with previous packs, they say that John will not disclose where he finds all his whiskey because this is all mystery juice apparently. Uh, but he said he's not, he's not going to disclose the origins of it because that is used to create the pact. But the official launch of Blood Oath Pact 8 included a total allocation of 51,000 bottles, 1,400 of which will be saved for a trilogy release. It is 98.6 proof and has an SRP of $120. Well, you read off all those age statements, I'm like, and we're throwing them in a finish cast. I'm kind of nervous. I'm like, those sounded like some good barrels. <laughs> believe I is. 11 year. Must be nice to just year. be able to play around with. 14, 11, 10 year old, whatever. You just got everything at your disposal to be able to do it, you know. And it doesn't say exactly if that was 13 year, 11 year, if it was Kentucky or if it was something else. I'm looking at the label here and it just says uh, finished in Calvados casks. Well, it actually does right there. Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. There you go. What do you know? So it is. Indiana yet. <laughs> it is. It is all still Kentucky. I'm sure there'll be Indiana soon. Hey, if they got the stocks, might as well. Smoke them if you got them. All right, on to the nose. Hmm. It's hard to pull anything. Yeah, I mean, there's some like slight like golden raisin. A little bit of baking spice. A little bit of baking spice. A little, it's very faint on the nose. A little light brown sugar kind of note. I mean, it, maybe there's just a little bit of that brandy influence, but it's not heavy. Yeah, I'm just getting more like what you typically would get with a Double digit age stated Kentucky bourbon, those kind of notes. Yeah. A little bit of sweet oak, maybe. That's right. All right. On to the taste. Wow. The flavor is much more explosive than. Yeah, I was about to say. Than I thought on the nose. From the nose, I thought it was going to be muted, but man, that was. It's got a nice mouthfeel. It's coating. It's an explosion of like grape skittles or something like kind of uh confectionery sugar type stuff stuff i really like the flavor as it as it came because we said it was really kind of hard to pull something out of the nose yeah, but i'm gonna the go again while you talk yeah the flavor uh, on the other hand it really kind of really started to show through and you get this little burst of fruit as soon as it starts hitting your palate and but it, it rounds out very well of what you would think of the oak profile that you get from the 11 and 14 year bourbons. Yeah. And that might be that little bit of that brandy influence that's playing there, but it's not so much that it's like a saturated, heavy, concentrated influence. It's just very, very well balanced and blended yeah. in there. Yeah. It's perfectly balanced. It's, it's, it's like you grab a handful of different flavors of Skittles, throw them in there <laughs> and then you they get just these, all meld together. These nice baking spices that, you know, finish the, the, the back end. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm not going to cut my hand and shake on it just yet, but let's go ahead and rate it. So on the Thank nose, <laughs> on the nose, where are you at here? I'm going to go sideways. Uh, it was a little muted. I, I, I wanted more, but. Uh, I almost would say down. I mean, actually, should say you probably sideways. I'm yeah. going to say down because it's not like offensive, but it just wasn't there. Yep. All right. And the taste. <laughs> the taste is excellent. This is one that my nose failed me because I thought I wasn't going to like it based on the nose. I thought it was going to be too light, too mild, but man, then it's amazing how much more flavor there is on the palate than there was on the nose. For sure. And the finish. Thumbs up. I mean, the finish was, I, I, this was an absolute like perfect finish, you know, just, it was not light. It wasn't over the top. It was just nice and balanced, nice spice. It didn't overpower that beautiful fruit note throughout the mid palate, front and mid palate. Um, it, this was fantastically done. And to be honest, personally, this is kind of one of the things that, you know, I've always seen Blood Oath and you kind of like, oh, like whatever, blah, blah, blah. 
this one might make you a believer. Yeah, to be honest with you. 51,000 bottles, there should be uh, quite a bit out there. So, and 140, I think 140 bucks, you said? 120. 120. I mean, that's the going right these days for double age age statements, unfortunately. But uh, I think compared to, you know, things in that price range on the market, I think this is a home run. I think it's a great one as well. Yep. Well, that's it. That's our review of Blood Oath Pact 8. And stick around with us because we'll be back next week with yet another Whiskey Quickie for you. Cheers.